virtual insanity because it was the third inning. And I'm like, wait a second, we had DeGrom last thing, so that means we should have Lugo tonight. What the actual F? Lugo got lit up? And of course, I look at the, the box score, an inning and two-thirds, four home runs, I think two of which were to Bryce Harper, that little bitch, and six earned runs on eight hits. I mean, whoa, dude. Seth Lugo, did he not get enough sleep? And of course, I mean, as, as gripping his hamstring. Damn it. That's no bueno. So <laughs> we're just imploding. I mean, you know, luckily DeGrom is not as serious as it is. Who knows if Lugo now has some kind of ailment. But I was watching some of the highlights, uh, the home runs that he did give up, and they're all fastballs up in the zone, letter high, above the belt, right in the wheelhouse. So he's just got to, maybe it's just, maybe it's just one of those instances where it's an off day. There's not much you can do about it, but we need him if that's, if we're going to actually make a run at this thing. So and the, the other news is like, uh, I, I saw that we have fucking 11 pitchers, relief pitchers, Justin Wilson, Dylan Batances, Darius from Darius Familia, Edwin Diaz, Chasen Shreve. Mike, uh, Miguel Castro, Brad Brock, Jared Hughes, Rosmo Ramirez, Waka. Oh, so Waka. That's what I wanted to talk about. Waka was the guy that came in, not Ramirez. Although Ramirez is still, it doesn't take away what Ramirez has done in his relief efforts. The ability that he usually comes in, he's kind of like a long reliever. He comes in when our starter, uh, shits the bed and he's done a fantastic job coming in in long relief. But when DeGrom went out, Waka came in. So Waka is now in the bullpen. And he gave us a pretty solid effort. I think he might have given up a home run, maybe another run, but he, he didn't he didn't let it, the game get away from him. And he didn't he kept the score manageable for offense to to at least have an opportunity to come back. Matt's is no longer in the bullpen. It looks like he's gonna start tomorrow. Maybe this time off has given him some you know, the ability to reflect on, on his journey <laughs> and do some meditation and really figure out what is bothering him and how to get back to, uh, his top, his top form. So, I mean, if we can pull this game out very, you know, it's, it's hard. I, I'm trying, I'm trying to temper my hopes and expectations because it's like, we have to, so many things have to come together with so much against us. I mean, the odds are stacked against us and it's going to take, it's going to take a miracle, but you know, miracles are kind of our forte, are they not? So we just got to figure something out about this pitching. I mean, if Peterson can, can shake off, you know, he had a pretty decent game against the Blue Jays. Last last go round, last time out. So if he can continue that kind of effort, you know, five innings, one, two runs. Okay, DeGrom, the hamstring is, doesn't become a bigger issue. Okay, Lugo just shakes it off and comes back to where he, he can be. Okay. And if Mats can be the guy, then I don't know. It's just it's, we're asking a lot. I don't know. We're asking a lot. But Stranger Things... You know, I say it all the time, stranger things have happened. And yeah, that's that. Uh, I guess we'll talk about this. The young arms, this is from SB Nation, Amazing Avenue. They talked about the young arms the Mets should use in the starting rotation. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not thrilled about any of these options, to be honest. Franklin Kiyome, Kilome, Kilome. 25 years old. We've already seen him a bunch this year. His ERA is over seven. Uh, we got him in the, tr the Asdrubal Cabrera trade at the 2018 trade deadline. He's made just eight starts after the trade uh, before he underwent Tommy John surgery and that sidelined him all of last season. I think he has two or th three saves maybe for us or a save. So, you know, I'm not like, I'm not doing any cartwheels about this dude. And then Thomas Zapuki, Zapuki, Zapaki. He's 24 year old lefty. 
who pitched a game at Double A, is our ninth top prospect, selected in the fourth round of the 2015 draft. He's been plagued by injuries throughout his career. I said that's not a winning, and that's not a ringing endorsement. And then Harold Gonzalez, a 25-year-old righty, who's thrown 26 games at the Double A level and nine games at the Triple A level, 3.6 e. ERA, uh, but averages like less than six innings per start. You know, I said this last week, it's at the point now where, I don't know, you just got to, maybe you do bring a young arm up and the guy is so hype and amped that he, you know, he's so excited to be at the big, in the show that he just overperforms and over delivers, which, which would, I mean, you know, I mean, when they brought up, I mean, when they brought up DeGrom, we didn't, no one had really high expectations for him. He was something like the, I think only Frank Viola was talking about him. It was like, hey, you know, you guys are talking about Harvey and Wheeler and blah, blah, blah. But there's this kid, Jake DeGrom, that you should uh, check out and consider. Or like, yeah, all right. What? He's like the 67th prospect. <laughs> what are you talking about? So, uh, but the one arm that, uh, so it's, you know, young arms for the starting rotation, but there is a young arm that I think that they might have already made an appearance with us, but probably not, that should we should consider for the bullpen. And that's Riley Gilliam. He's a fifth-round selection in the 18, 2018 draft. Uh, he reached AAA in his first full season. He's like a seventh or eighth inning guy. And, you know, I'll finish with this. Maybe the statisticians and the sabermetrics and the numbers guys were right about Edwin Diaz. He had a big save last night. We've seen the numbers. Is it time to just say, fuck it, and let's trust him with the closer role, ride or die? Just roll with it. Just say, if we're going to win, we're going to need him to close games, and he's going to have to do it. And if he doesn't, so be it. But if he does, whew, look out. So... Okay, I guess he's your closer now. <laughs> Justin Wilson is like, I mean, the guys that were giving us such great innings before, such great appearances before, Brock used, they're not getting it done. Wilson, not really getting it done, getting knocked around. Erasmo Ramirez is doing the job. Shreve is in now. He's been doing well, fairly well so far. Gets a nice little strikeout on uh, the former MVP, Andrew McCutch, in. So, and Patances, I mean, I don't know what his deal is now. Familia, who knows? Castro is coming around, so that's good. So maybe it's just a case of like everyone just fucking bearing down and being like, guys, no more fucking around. <laughs> we have like, we have very little room for error, which makes, which makes these in, and I, I mentioned the base running gaffes, like Conforto not running with two outs on the hit on the ball, the gap and what would uh, be the, I think it's the tying run or the go ahead run. Holy shit, man. I mean, if he gets thrown out that we, the New York media, that's like, never forget. Just like, we will never forget that. And then it goes, it goes against, um, you know, what, what, uh, all the Conforto pro Conforto guys out there. So, um, you want to talk about some, we'll talk about that last. So speaking of Wilson Ramos, he's hitting 129 with runners in scoring position. Just an absolutely brutal season. Uh, at least, you know, when he was on point last year, he was driving the ball the opposite way a lot, but he, uh, he's trying to pull sinkers in crucial situations and he's getting burnt by it. So. And this is where I think Brody and the Wilpons have kind of, kind of fucked over the, hopefully the future G, the future GM and Steve Cohen. And that I don't see any reason or any, I don't see why they should bring back Wilson Ramos. And then they end up bringing in Robinson Chernos, and it's like both of those dudes will require something like a two million dollar buyout each. So great. I mean, I know Cohen can afford it, but it's just like. Ugh. It's just, I never feel good about that. I know it's not my money, but it feels like my money. 